everybody. What's happening, family? And welcome back to another episode of Is, is This, this Going to Cause an argument? argument? My name is Angel Lakita Moore, also known as Angel Tanksley, also known as That Chick Angel, That Chick Angel, Angel, That Chick Angel, That Chick Angel, yeah. And I'm joined by this man who looks so good in red. I love you in red, in light blue, in naked. This is my boyfriend, my husband, and the co-host of the NAACP Image Award nominated podcast. Tell them who you are, mm-hmm. baby. I am Marcus Tanksley, aka Tank, the other host. Like she said, if this is gonna cause an argument. Hey fam, if this is your first time tuning in, we greatly appreciate it. It's a podcast we do every single week except for one. We're here for 51 weeks out of the year. Ain't we? You understand what I'm saying? And we talk about pretty much anything <laughs> we what? Whenever you go into you understand what I'm saying, it lets me know you you revving up. Yeah, leave me alone. Shut up. Let me rev up. I just giggled. <laughs> anyway, we talk about pretty much anything we want to talk about. We argue a little bit. That's why it's called it's going to cause an argument because we married and that's type stuff that happens. Yeah. Ain't married to to tell you they don't disagree. They lying. Either to you or themselves. Period. Uh... Also, we are joined by our immediate family. Mm-hmm. All right, our immediate family are the Patri- people on Patreon, okay? They're the people that watch us live. They watch us film this live. We talk to them before and after and during. We read in their comments, come in and all that jazz. And uh, you can be a part of the immediate family. All you got to do is sign up for the low, low of $5 a month. Hey, come mm-hmm. over and support it. They, they support us. They go a little above and beyond is why we call them immediate because it's a little closer, okay? We talk to them mm-hmm. outside of Gen Pop. And we also joined by some wonderful sponsors. Angel. We are joined by two great sponsors. Can't wait to tell you about them. They are Life360 and Earning. We'll tell you more about them later on the podcast. And if they offer a service or a product that you have been thinking about trying, please use our promo code or URL. Let's them know that we sent you and that this was a great partnership between us and them. So we're going to hop right into the pod. Yeah. And we will start with a good old Tanksley pride story because we did uh, In My Feelings last week. Mm -hmm. I said, let's flip it. Let's talk about these boys. Um, If you don't know what Tanksley pride is, we have four beautiful boys, little kings that we're raising. We have a 14-year-old, 9-year-old twins, and a 4-year-old. And Tanksley pride, not only are they the pride of our family, but they are also, we are also a pride of lions. Mm-hmm. Um, so my Tanksley Pride story has to do with our son. Did we tell this story? No, I don't think we have. Our son Cy. Oh no, we didn't tell this. Um, I'm not going to tell you all the details, but we got a call last week, or um, the week before last, or the week before last. And we got a call from the head of school. This is right on the heels of we just went to an open house where I'm getting all emotional because I am just feeling so blessed that they are at this school where they are being offered so many learning opportunities where their minds are being expanded versus them being put in a tighter box, which I feel like a lot of, unfortunately, this is what happens in a lot of public school education in uh, cities and counties where the funding is trash. Yeah. So we're, we're on a high. The next day we get a call from the head of school where basically um, there was a kerfuffle on the playground where there was a child that was not being nice apparently to other kids and Cy gets all big and bad and says something very rude to the boy. Um, rude in the sense that, you know, if you, if somebody were to say something to you, like, and see, that's why you black. Now we all know being black is not a bad thing, but if you say it to me like that, that lets me know you think it's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. So he said something to the child, not dealing with his race, ethnicity, gender, or anything like that, but dealing with his potential family structure. And he called him a loser. And this boy proceeds to put his hands on my child repeatedly, okay? And we're like, 
the 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 f you say like what, what what are you telling me right now just happened and they're telling me the consequences of both students um they both had to write a apology letter and um, my concern was i said while well, definitely my child hit below the belt get it i said and we will talk to him about saying those type of things to people I said, I need to make sure that the punishment is not the same. I need my child to know the punishment ain't the same. I need him to know that someone putting their hands on him is not tolerated. I don't care what my son says. <laughs> it just ain't. And they were like, no, 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 no. There was a difference. Sai was able to rejoin his class. The other child was not. The other child will also be basically on in-school suspension the following week, because this happened on a Friday. Mm -hmm. They also, they were like, we don't do, we try not to do out of school suspension just because we don't know what's allowed at their house, right. their they, home. They could be at the house just having Playing a good video time games. And, yeah, so they do in school suspension is like we got control over what happens here. Right. Um, and so we were just like, and what they were trying to, <laughs> to do, which really didn't matter to us, because we were just like, yo, like, mm -mm. But what they kept trying to do was, for one us, this other child got issues. <laughs> pretty yeah, much. This ain't the, this ain't this ain't the first, the first time. Uh, time this month or even, maybe even this week, possibly. That this child. That this child has been sent to the office for, you know, laying hands. <laughs> and we're like, what? what? For me, for me, it was more so like, don't, I don't care that my child is like not the only person that has dealt with this child. My child shouldn't have to deal with this person at all. And they assured us, like, he's not in the same class as your child. The thing is, is that they all, all the third graders have lunch together. All the third graders play on the playground together. Um, but we were kind of, like, shocked and blown away. And I was like, this is, this is the last time. Like, if I even hear this child's name again, if that child is not taken up out of that school, <laughs> we're going to have big issues. Because I don't really care what my child said, to be honest. You don't get to put your hands. You just don't. And so, of course, we were like, now where yeah. the hell was Kai? <laughs> so, yeah. Go ahead. So, Angel was out of town. Were you out of town yet? No. Oh. Oh, I, I wouldn't pick I him was, up. I was leave. Well, no, when you picked him up, I yeah. would, was already leaving to yeah, go to. Yeah, you was leaving to go out. By the time we got home, you were already gone. Yes, there we go. Yeah. Uh, so I picked him up and I just, you know, sitting there having a conversation. So, yeah, so what happened? So, of course, I, he starts crying again. He didn't even tell me what happened. He just starts crying again. Finally, he gets it out. So he gets all his words out. And my very next question, Kai, where was you at? He's, Kai's like, look, I didn't see nothing. I didn't know this was happening. <laughs> so, after, you know, I talked to Sai about, you know, everything that he did. But then my next question was, and this is, I think, what outside of this happening at this school and the way it was handled, this was the next thing that kind of pissed me off. How you let somebody put their hands on you multiple times? And you not. What did you do? That If you said something you shouldn't have said, you was wrong. All right. They put their hands on you. You back them up. All right. Shouldn't have done that. But again, there should have been a fight. Right. There should have been a full-blown <laughs> fight. We shouldn't be getting a call that our son was assaulted repeatedly, repeatedly. And I made sure I used those words. I was like, my son was physically assaulted multiple times. We should not get a call about multiple physical assaults. We should have got a call about your son was in a fight with yeah. another child. And that's what I told him. I said, ain't going to be no more this happened. No, you got into a fight over something you said. <laughs> Right, right, <laughs> right. And he, because he said it hurt, which just really hurt my heart. Because I'm like, dude, don't let nobody, y'all don't even let your brothers hurt you. Like, I'd be like, y'all stop. You think I'm going to tolerate somebody else hurting you? And, yeah, and, and his reasoning was he didn't want to hurt the boy. Hurt him. And I said, hurt him. Anybody, I don't, I don't care if it's one of your brothers. Hurt him, and we will come up, we will figure out what we're going to do with the fallout of it all. 
And uh, so Marcus talked to him about that more so, about, like, you have to defend yourself. Yeah, you have to defend yourself. You can't be out here just... And it's so crazy. Sai used to be the one that would haul yeah. off and be physical. We were worried about Sai for a while. Because it was just like, he... A switch flips and he is gone. Yeah. Well, we have to hold him back. He was about to fight this one little boy in the museum for going before him. And I had to <laughs> snatch him back. Like, it's okay. You can wait. Yeah, we uh, overtrained him. <laughs> now he's like, uh... Yeah, now look here, you monk. <laughs> but... um. We talked about the inappropriate words that um, he yeah. used about um, the boy's family structure, which was not only was it mean, but it was also untrue. And we just talked about like, you know, somebody says well, he's trying to do better. Hell, we're doing better. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we just talked about things that are below the belt, like. Yeah. I get it. Y'all were tired of the way this boy was handling folk. Apparently he had um he had been threatening to hit the girl that Sai has a crush on. So that was one of the reasons why Sai was like, that's why you're a loser. And yada yada yah. Um, but I was just like, listen, I'm not saying that you can't you know, give somebody a lashing with your tongue. But you can't say things that are not, um, that are inappropriate. And so I gave him the same example of, if someone were to be like, that's why you're a loser and you're black. I was like, is there anything wrong with being black? And he was like, no. I was like, so is there any wrong, anything wrong with this situation? He was like, no. I said, so th that just shows which that more so shows your thinking and that's not how we think in this household. So of course he was about to cry. And I, then I said, so do I need to go to school and beat up this little boy? He was like, no, I said, it sounds like I do. I said, because let me tell you what you need to understand is I'm not going to tolerate nobody putting their hands on my baby. So either you make sure you check it next time or mama's going to be slinging little third graders around that school. And then we all going to be in trouble. He was like, he was like, okay, okay. I said, cause I don't tolerate my babies getting hurt. But yeah, that's our Tanksley Pride story. We got in our first little, and this is crazy. At the other school, you remember Sai started beating up on that one boy because was he was playing too hard. He didn't like the powers that the boy was using. <laughs> yes, cause he kept using fake powers. So using fake powers, so I was like, get it now. I'm gonna show you these hand powers. <laughs> No, no, it don't make no sense. I'm like, there was a boy who was using fake powers and you hauled off and pushed him down to the ground and started beating on him. And a boy lo puts, literally hurts you physically and you're like. That's the teacher, we, the lesson we had to take because <laughs> Kai told on him. Yes. Kai told the teacher. The teacher. I said, you dummy. <laughs> don't you ever, I didn't call him dummy. But I was like, don't you ever do that mess again. Oh, it made me so mad. But uh, speaking of kids, before we go into your Tanksley Pride story, cannot wait to tell you all about our new sponsor. We want to thank Life360 for being a sponsors of today's podcast. Okay, so some of the things that make my protective instincts kick into high gear is when my child is far, 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 far away from me or if we're in a setting where it's like, really easy for them to get lost where there's like a lot of people if we're at a fair or an amusement park um and i know especially when little marcus flew to dc that is when i was like Whew, oh my gosh this this is a lot for me well you can't wrap your kids in a bubble wrap to keep them safe Ooh, i wish we could but you can give yourself some peace of mind with Life360 app. Life360 is a family connection and safety app that lets you keep track of the people and the things that are most important to you. It's more like just sharing your lo it's more than just, excuse me, sharing your location, right? Which is great. It's about safety and Life360 keeps families connected and most importantly protected throughout the day. Um so what I love about uh Life360 60 is that it kind of it keeps the family in sync you're getting like real time of where 
your children are at, right? You're getting a real, like, especially now that we have a high schooler, they now, high school kids go to parties that aren't always sanctioned by the school. And it's, it's just other high schoolers, but still with the way the world is right now, I want to know if they leave that location, where is he going? Um, it has some amazing features, um, as well as custom location tracks. Um, let me see if I can tell you about a couple of the features, uh, that they have. I'm telling you, if you've never used Life360, you are truly missing out because it's just really, it's kind of hard to, to just describe of how much better it makes you feel. For instance, little Marcus will be driving soon, right? He's, uh, he'll be turning, um, thank God he's not turning 16 this year, about passed out, but he will be getting his learner's permit and everything. Um, mm. So they have a, a, drive, a driving safety feature that uh, does crash de detection. So I don't have to wait for my child to call me if something happens. I will know because of the app, right? Also, it has phone tracking as well as emergency assistance. These are things that you can't just get on the phone by itself. I know people think they can do stuff like that, but no, you need something like this to help you out. Coordinate activities in real time, keep tabs on your kids, and connect with your family. Stay connected without constantly bugging them. Custom alerts to let you know if your, your kids um, and gives the kids the freedoms they crave without compromising trust and communication. It's also a lifeline during emergencies. Like I said, it has the free crash detection that sends you alerts if someone in your circle is in an accident. You know exactly where your kids are if they need help. Or use the SOS button for 24-7 emergency dispatch response. Um, Life360 has your ch family's back when they're on the road with things like crash detection and um, emergency dispatch. And track your stuff with Tile or use Tile to find your phone even if, if it's on silent. Um, Tile is really good at, for finding the phone feature or um, if you lose an item. And you can also customize Life360 for your own family's experience. Um, so I just think it's something amazing. So put away your bubble wrap and protect your loved ones with Life360. Visit life360.com or download the app today and use code ARGUE, Argue. to get one month of gold package for free plus 15% off all tiles. That's life360.com, code ARGUE. ARGUE. Thank you, Life360, for sponsoring today's podcast. We appreciate it. All right. So what's your Tank Sleep Ride story? Uh, so mine, um, as y'all know, I've been, I've been back to working out for, it's been a couple months now, time off here and there. But I usually go in the garage in the, in the evenings, do me an hour and a half, maybe two hour workout, some, sometimes two hours, depending on the day. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been getting guests lately. Mm-hmm. Usually it was Amar. He would come out and play and stuff and, you know, do his little workouts and stuff. But lately, it's mostly been Kai, uh, but sometimes both Sai and Kai. But Kai, mainly him, he will come out there and he takes these workouts serious. Very. Like, he's out there. He's like, can I do this? I'm like, yeah. So, in between me doing stuff, he'll go do a little something. He'll set up. I got this, uh, the dip bars. You know how you, do, you can do dips. He's trying his best to get them. He dips in pull-ups. He's like, I'm going to get these one day. And just seeing him just come out there and just do his little <laughs> workouts with me, only thing that gets on me is I got to stop my music. No. Because, you know, I'm out there listening to music. I'm selling drugs and killing people for my workouts. That's what gives me energy. You know, that's, that's what I like. Why don't you, uh, since he loves my iPod, just make sure he has headphones and iPod and he can put his own music on in his ear. That's going to be too much for that boy. I he's, don't. He's, he's, he's too active. It's yeah. already enough of him moving stuff around, and I'm trying to make sure he don't hurt himself. Or kid, do, do you ever put yours just in your ear to work out there? I do, but I, I like to feel, I like to feel, feel around, it. yeah, feel the music around me. I don't think he would mind the headphones as long as he can clip the thing to him. I think he would be yeah. like, even though his music is is like Bruno Mars, he'll be <laughs> talking to the moon. Yeah, then I got him saying, because that's one thing he gonna do is sing. And I love it. And I love it. He's getting better and better. He really is. Yeah, he is. Oh. Because he, thing is, is uh, I've talked about it on here before, too, even with them playing basketball. Everything they do, Kai 
has more drive than any of these kids. Mm -hmm. He will make himself better any means necessary to where side things just come natural to side. Yeah. Like yeah. side try something two, three times, all of a sudden he's just good at it. Yeah. And Kai, he will like, as long as he's better than his brother, he's good. So there's, it's always a constant one and up each other. But, uh, that's, I, I really, I feed into Kai's arrogance <laughs> because I still read it as confidence and that confidence is what has, gotten him to where he is thus far has gotten him working past any learning disabilities he's had it's gotten him to be a better basketball player he understands the sport probably mm. better than what i do now just because he is taking a real active interest yeah he every game and he it, watches with me we gotta ask chance if he has a camp at the uh, that they can go to I for did. the first month uh I don't remember if he was finding it or maybe we went off on something else. Um, but he uh, he really does take his workout seriously, so I try not to pick with him when he's working out with his dad. But I'll be like, so you trying to be buff? You going to be buff? He'll be like, I'm not sure. And I'm like, yeah. don't don't give me I'm not sure. If that's what you want, then say that's what you want because you can have it. If you want to be buff like daddy, you can be buff like daddy. He's like, honey, I guess so. I guess so. <laughs> It's so cute. It's so cute. It really is. I hope y'all bought off that because he be talking about, he be like, come on, that was he, that was a travel. Like, that is oh, him yeah, no, talking he, to he, the screen. He watches every game with me, uh, every one that he can catch. He watches with me. He, of course, asks a thousand questions. Mm -hmm. Side too. Sai then got in there and started uh, watching and asking, too, which is also interesting because Sai's a lot more, uh, uh, what's the right word, aloof? Yeah. Yeah, so I was a lot more aloof than uh, Kai is. Like, I noticed this, a lot of it this past weekend uh, on the three days because, you know, they get on their tablets and they call uh, McKinley, the Goosby's daughter. They call mm -hmm. Rhea, uh, Janora. Janora's daughter. They call Arya, Quinn's, Quinn's daughter. daughter. Um, and they all on these games and playing games together. And most of the time it'll be Kai. Kai uh, Sai's usually off. If he's, sometimes he's on the game, then he'll tap out get on something of his own on the tablet. And then other times he's like, they got all these Lego puzzles and monsters and vehicles um, that you can build. Like it comes with instructions. And a lot of times he's off by himself doing those things. Uh, so it's yeah, interesting seeing those two dynamics of them. Yeah. It's really great. I love my boys. I really do. God, God really blessed us with a good mm -hmm. little batch of boys. Okay. So I want to do, uh, Get out of my text. Um, we're going to do a Tanksley. Oh, sorry. A TikTok o'clock. Angel, girl, what time is it? TikTok o'clock. Um, this is something that Viola Davis recently posted. And I will start it All right. I think now. the problem is that we forget that white people today have the option of tapping out, right? So you can sing Jabulani and you can dance, but then you can also remove yourself from the lived experiences of the culture that you're trying to, I'm sorry I'm speaking, from the from the culture that you're, that you're trying to represent. That doesn't make you a bad person. It's just the truth of the situation. And I think in South Africa, this is really what the conversation needs to be about. We need to talk about why did apartheid end? Why did colonialism end? Mm. It didn't end because people's perspectives and behavior changed. It ended because it was expensive. It ended because white people couldn't travel anymore. It ended because they couldn't go and play sport. Because entertainment for white people was over. Therefore, they needed to bring it home. That's not... We need to be honest. We must be honest about it. So for me... So, so for me, when we want to have this conversation, it's easy to say, let's talk about the Rainbow Nation. Of course you can look forward if your life was never tainted by the, ex by the experience of a project. Of course you can look forward. It's not the same. And that's the experience of being black, constant, constantly having to reconcile your existence, reconcile your hum humanity, and demand respect and demand a level of, of humanity as opposed to what other people just get automatically by being white. That's the reality. You don't have to label it as racism if you don't want to but it is what it is all right okay i was like what well, i didn't even get to hear it the first time i just saw her talking with passion i said this is going to be a good one uh -huh. save it save it so uh to kind of summarize it she was saying that like 
um, for those people who are not living the black experience. And when I say black experience in a more specific way, I mean the experience that is a lot of times uh, tainted with racism, tainted with uh, institutionalized racism. Um, those people who don't have that experience are able to tap in and out of the conversation mm -hmm. about moving life forward and to the point of sometimes it's uh, even easier for those people who aren't living the black experience to just look at the brighter future. They're just like, oh, without having to really deal with the, okay, but in this current state, we have to also talk about that. And we also have to talk about the past state. Like the right. future is still dictated some by the past. Uh, so what are your uh, thoughts? No, nah, a thousand percent. I can't agree with her more. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's even deeper than that. It's like uh, people talk about this. Uh, they, they talk about like moving forward, like the people that want to do right, they want to move forward. But like she said, they have the, the privilege of not, of, you know what, I'll worry, I'll worry about that next week. But black folk, um, on the same thing, I saw a guy recently, he's been married, he's married, a white guy married to a black woman. I don't know if I sent it to you or not. Married, he's been married for 26 years. They dated, I think, three years before they got married. He said, and he he had a white friend, because, you know, they say, you know, for black people to uh, get the same thing that white people have, you have to work twice as hard. Mm -hmm. And he said he's asked people, had him, people ask him that. And he said, I had somebody, somebody ask me recently, he's like, they asked him if it was true. He said, no, it's not true. He said, if, uh, the way he said it, he said, if X times Y equals this, it would be X times a question mark would equal this. Mm -hmm. But he said, I've watched my wife get passed up <laughs> by people that is less qualified, that's less educated. I've, I've watched her miss out on opportunity after opportunity. I watched her, our family, he's a, her family, but our family not be able to get loans all because they were black. He said, it's not a, oh, if you do this once, I have to do it twice and I get what you got. It's still right. might not get it. Right. He said, I guarantee, he said, I don't know, he, nobody in my family, if I told them, well, if you just do it twice as hard as me, you or twice as hard as somebody white, I'll promise that you can get this. He said, any of them would take up a, take up that opportunity because it'd be a whole lot easier. Because mm -hmm. you know for a fact that if I do it twice as much, I would get it. Thank you. We do it three, four, five, six, seven, eight times as much and still might not get it. Yes. Um, and this is, that's just one of the like aspects of what she's talking about. When people talk about moving forward, we ain't that far from the past. The past was just yesterday. Yeah. And, 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 and like the way this country was set up, the way this world has been set up, it's like this whole talk of moving forward. You can't, you have to live in the past in order to learn from it. Yeah. And it's like a lot of them, they, they've learned their lesson of, oh, this is what the, the South falls when we do this. So you know what? We need to strengthen up what we do to make sure that don't happen again. Right. That's why I think it's, a, it's, it's such a, on a, such an unequal playing field because you still have a lot of people in power that want it the way it was or they want a new infrastructure to look similar to the way it was but in a modern way. Mm -hmm. That's why you got uh, ter terrorist organiza domestic terrorist organizations that are illegal to sign up with because the people in charge are the ones that's running the thing. Yeah. The Klan is a domestic terrorist group. Yeah. And then you got other facets that's not the same thing, but is the same thing. And it ain't illegal to join this, but they made the Black Panther Party illegal just because people was trying to get equal rights and not get beat up by the cops. And they wasn't doing nothing illegal. They were actually following the laws. The laws that they were following, the government then made those laws illegal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they talk about, oh, gun control. They talk about gun control. The Black Panther Party were legally carrying guns to the state capitol. You know what they did? They outlawed guns. Mm -hmm. But now all of a sudden white people want to do it. <laughs> no, we like, can't take people's rights away. Yeah. Yeah. So these are the type of things we talk about moving forward. These are the type of things we have too many people sitting on top and they can ignore all that crap that we know is inevitable mm -hmm. that's going to end up coming up that's going to get ignored. Yeah. I, uh, I recently, to add to it, I just watched Origins by Ava DuVernay which follows loosely the life of the author of uh, the cast, 
and I unfortunately at this time is blank. I'm blanking on that author's name, but uh, the role was beautifully played by Anjanou Ellis, uh, who's a Sara of mine. It's a Sara. My Sara, or as our national president now says, Sara. Anyways, <laughs> she. How old is your national president? She's probably in her sixties. Oh, okay. If she's it just sounds 70s, like a lot to do to be too much older than she. I don't know. She could be in her seventies. I don't know. She's she, really country. You know, I was gonna say she's probably hundred and six. You know how black women be aging. Uh, she looks great with a little short self. Um, and movies do not make me cry. This movie was tugging at everything in me. Well, it was tugging at all of my fears, right? And the whole purpose of the movie, however, was to connect racism, institutional racism in America, to the Holocaust, to the caste system that is currently existing in India. Um, and I feel like I'm missing one. I'm missing one other thing. Ooh, oh, to the, um, so sorry, let me say slavery, to the Holocaust, to the current caste system, to the shooting and killing and murder of Trayvon Martin. It started off with Trayvon Martin's murder, which was enough to just put me under the plane because yeah. that one out of all of them are horrific. But that one was right after I think little Marcus might have been three or four. And I was just like, oh, no, mm -hmm. this is what I just birthed a child into. Why the hell would I do that? Anyways, um, I uh, was listening to what she felt like was the the breakdown first of all she was saying how the nazi uh, what do you call them they weren't a group the nazi party the nazi party looked at how america handled slavery in the jim crow or post and post slavery mm -hmm. to figure out how to come up with their idea around how they would get rid of the jewish people mm -hmm. um but there is this whole this whole thing of wanting to get people to believe that they are the superior race mm -hmm. that I don't think a lot of people realize they are under the, the guise of still. Right. Like I think there are some people who actually believe um believe that they don't. <laughs> Yeah. believe that but there's so many things that are set up in our day-to-day -day life that cause causes that thinking to easily be like yeah what you fall on just even the simplicity of nude stockings yeah being the color of quote more closely resembles a white person than it does a black yeah. person i'm just talking about them dresses yeah the dresses yeah. that you hate there are things that are set up. Band-Aids. Yes. All <laughs> these things that are set up for whiteness to be the standard and for anything else to be a derivative of what mm -hmm. is normal um, that I don't think people realize seeps into their psyche. Yeah. It's uh, even the, something as simple as uh, the, they always say, you know, out of the darkness. They always consider the darkness, the the evil or the yes. unknown, or you're terrified oh, color and, theory. into the light. Uh -huh. Yeah, and it's color theory. It's just like, well, you know, no, everything comes from darkness. The womb is dark. Space is like everything. Like you know what I'm saying? Dark absorbs everything. Mm -hmm. White is what reflects everything mm -hmm. outward. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and this all this all started. I'm just gonna do just a real quick history thousand thousands and thousands of year old history lesson. Ancient Egyptians, ancient Kemet, all of that, black people were worshipped as gods by Europeans. We, they taught them language, or not language, but they taught them math. They taught them writing. They taught them reading, uh, organized civilization. Once Europeans started to travel the same way that Africans were traveling all around the world, they saw that on all the other continents that they didn't know about, that they now are discovering, it's the same people that we've been worshipping. We need to change this. And that's how all that started. <laughs> that's they say, you know, racism was invented in, uh, by the Portuguese in like 1400. It was. It actually happened before then. The uh, what's it called? The pyramids. You can see the structure and the 
the colorism on the pyramids and when it and you can even see the research the shift in the dynamic of oh the, they're being worshipped then you can see it, they say how it changed over the years over the centuries but women the sh the I missed the connection towards that last end you said the color um, shift of the, the pyramids so you can see the paintings the ones that haven't been tampered with oh paintings you didn't say paintings well, on the pyramids the uh, hieroglyphics and okay. the artwork on the hieroglyphics that's the part that i was missing you can see how you, it was clear that those people were black the the uh, mm -hmm. ro the royalty they were all black and then as these things are getting more discovered and they try to uh what they call uh refinish them now all of a sudden you see that even the cup skin colors is they say oh that happened over time no those things were purposely purposefully painted with dark skin because the people that painted them had dark skin <laughs> Okay, yeah. Now I get what you're saying. I, I just said I was like the the pyramids changed color. I no, thought no, you were no, talking about the, the structure, the hieroglyphics, and the artwork. <laughs> Got it. And the storytelling inside the pyramids and on the uh, artwork. Completely get where you're going. Completely what you get what you're saying. Um, so yeah, I th I feel as though this conversation that happens in the room with people who are trying to be allies, who honestly have the the intention of being allies, I think uh, there has to be the, the honesty of them realizing when this is over, when this conversation is over, I don't have to be plagued by this conversation mm -hmm. where I, as a black person, will be plagued by this conversation. Not only that, even as the tide changes, I also have to feel, figure out what I will feel in that as the tide changes. Like, I can only imagine the part existential crisis that a person who was a slave that was no longer a slave went through mm -hmm. to be owned from birth to now not being owned, but depending on where they lived, if they're in the South, th sometimes their situation was just as bad because then they weren't able to work. Worse. Yeah, um, the only thing, uh, I mean, because they were still hanging folks, so their life was right. still uh, in slavery. There was some protection under the fact that a person could not just take someone else's property and kill it. Right. Where once you're no longer considered property, your life is not worth anything to someone who just decides it's not, and they can kill you without any repercussions mm -hmm. underneath it. But um, just... Uh, Hearing that and hearing that these conversations, even in like this, this conversation was happening in South Africa. It was not happening in the U.S. That there is a, I feel like there's slowly but surely a reckoning happening. And even when we think about this next uh, presidential election where I feel like there are a lot of distractions happening mm -hmm. on purpose. Um, I just think about there is a reckoning and I feel like this younger generation is kind of, uh, for the most part, fed up with some of the same old, same old. However, comma, I feel like some of the older people are like, over my dead body, will you change the structure of this nation that was set up for white men to be at the highest point of status, the highest point of wealth? Um, and I'm just, I'm just wondering what's going to happen. There's so many things happen. There's the genocide in Palestine. There's the genocide in the Congo. Um, but then there are all these distractions within the U.S. where I'm just like, we y'all know we have a presidential election yeah. this year. This year. Not in four years. So the changing of political parties and the way the party system is set up right now is not going to happen in 2024 before we have a presidential election. So what are we going to do about who is in seat for the next four years? Because we currently, regardless of what people think, in my, uh, my opinion, we got two options. Yeah, there are more than two yeah, options on, <laughs> on the voting ballot. People don't understand propaganda. That's the problem. While there is more than two options on the ballot, there are only two options for who can win right. the election. And right now, I'm focused on who will win. I don't care how you want to phrase it. I don't care how you want to put it. And I can tell you right now, my heart of hearts, there is one option that I am afraid of what, will, what they will do right. <laughs> in office. And there's another option 
that I don't think is actually going to do much. I'd rather not do much <laughs> than to do additional damage. That is just the way I see it. Yeah. This is not about me saying, oh, I think this person is more for black people. Da -da -da. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is, if I want to give myself a fighting chance to not have to worry about the repercussions of what will happen to black people and even internationally. There's only one option that I see that can win. And I feel like the other option, we're putting ourselves in a world of trouble because these people, excuse me, these people that support this man are the people who are deathly afraid of the good old boys club being put down. Mm -hmm. And when I tell you their right to bear arms is what they are going to put at the, as their, as their power and their moving force, y'all. Yeah. It's, I wish I could find it. There was a, um, one of the late night shows, Marcus is still in school. Uh, there was one of the late night shows and he said, so right now we have somebody running for office and he starts listing out all the things that he's been investigated and in court for. And at first it's funny. It's like hilarious. Like, wow, this, the list is still going. And then he keeps going and it's like, how, oh, okay, it's still funny. And then he keeps going and it goes from funny to extreme concern. Yeah. It's like, no, this is a joke, but this is serious. Like, he ain't told a lie yet. And the amount, if you th think of the list of stuff and just go down it one by one, it is terrifying. Yeah, Project 2025 mm -hmm. is the most terrifying thing I've ever heard of. I actually and they started... learn they learn from history. That's why Project 2025 is in existence. I actually started reading Project 2025 from their website. I was like, I don't want to take anybody's word for it. I've been learning about their four pillars. I was looking, the document is over, I think it's like over 800 pages long. It's something ridiculously long. And I started uh, reading it. I have it pulled up on my iPad. And all of the people that they had contribute to Project 2024, it's a long, very, very long list. Two of the men that are kind of over Project 2025, excuse me, are from a group called heritage.org. And they are, they're, they're not just looking at this presidential election. They're looking at every piece of government from here on out. Yeah. So every piece of, I'm talking about to the point that they are wanting to put together a list of every person that they can think of that is a conservative, part, very conservative, very far right, so that they can help get them in office in every level and branch of government. Yeah. And I'm not here to tell people how to vote, but I will also I will also not sit around and tolerate when people try to make it seem as if this is an election to throw, meaning, oh, if the Dems ain't doing what they're supposed to be doing, then we're not going to be having their back and we will vote elsewhere. I'm going to be looking at them people out of the side of my eye in possibly saying some really really nasty stuff <laughs> if this election goes in a way that it really could like this is anybody this between the two options i have no idea where this is going to land and i think just real quick because i know you gotta do that just real quick I, one thing i wish more people understood is how temporary nations are people have no idea because it's been a generation that hasn't seen a huge shift You've seen it in other countries, but you ain't seen it in your own yet. You've seen, uh, you know, even when, uh, was it China or no, J Japan that mm -hmm. broke away from Great Britain back in the 80s or 90s. Mm -hmm. um, you had, you, you've seen the, these shifts in, in uh, different uh, nations and countries. This is not permanent. This country not, is not permanent. This government is not permanent. These people have learned from the past history and they know what they need to do to make things swing in their favor for the new country. Y'all yeah. might think this sound like, oh, it's some conspiracy shit. Go back and do your history and find out how how quick. 
nations only get the time span only go, get shorter and shorter for nations. Mm -hmm. You back and you had the uh, the Romans, the what was it Julius Caesar, mm -hmm. Rome, ancient Rome. That was what a thousand years. Ain't no nation that hardly ever lasted that long. You had Ming Dynasty, all these other ones, the Mayan civilization, they disappeared. But then you get to modern times and see how fast these nations rise and fall and think for one second that the United States ain't on the brink of a change. Yeah. Just with this criminal that they about to put back into office. Think about what presidents used to represent versus him. Before, we thought Nixon was a criminal. This man make me wish Nixon came back for three more. I would vote for him quick as hell. <laughs> Listen, where's George? Yeah, exactly. Give me George. Mitt, right, please, Mitt, <laughs> run again. Y'all, man, people have no idea. So please, in your own, in your own communities, in your own, um, in your own uh, circles, when it's time to cast those ballots, this is definitely not a time to be passive. And I'm all for it. Listen, I'm all for restructuring of the government f for the purpose of really being a more of a democracy. But 2024 is not when that is going to happen. And if anybody thinks differently, I feel like they're really being ignorant, period. And I'll say that to their face. Um, but what I'll also say to your face is life doesn't happen biweekly. That's what I'm trying to say. So watch your payday. The money you earn can be in your hands today with Earning. Earning is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work up to $100 per week, uh, excuse me, up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. Just download the Earning app and verify your paycheck, then access up to $100 a day as you work and leave an optional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. So Earning is good for many reasons. For instance, if you have a pet that needs to go to the vet unexpectedly, if you got friends that are getting married, you need to get them a gift. Or let's just say that dang on tired then just fell apart on your car and you need a new one. Earning is there to help you See, you, this is what you need to do. Make earning a part of your financial routine and join earnings over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think of earning, I think of financial stability, security. It gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download Earning Today, spelled E-A-R-N-I-N, in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earning app, type in Argument under Podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Argument, Argument. under Podcast. Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earning.com slash TOS for details. Earning is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and Trust, member FDIC. Thank you, Earning, for sponsoring today's podcast. Let's jump to the main topic now that we Absolutely. didn't. Absolutely. I thought we were going to scare some people off. No, 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 no. <laughs> Y'all know we don't usually talk uh, yeah. political. And as you can see, we didn't mention other than past presidents. We didn't even mention current um, presidents um, because. But that went right along with the TikTok o'clock and what the old girl was saying. Ain't nothing we said very from didn't spider web off of what she was already bringing up. Absolutely. And a part of my job as an influencer is to you and as a delta god dang it is to use my influence to uh make sure i am recommending people do things that i that i feel based off of history is going to be more helpful to everyone um so uh our <laughs> tiktok the clock this will be lighthearted. our first impressions this is tiktok the clock excuse, excuse me topic of the day uh. jesus help me main topic is our first impressions of each other as we are headed towards our anniversary. Oh, we're headed towards vacations with each mm -hmm. other. Um, a whole bunch of travel. Yeah, so we'll get to spend more we, time with each other. Try not to be one of them couples I used to watch. Arguing <laughs> the, at the, the airport. airport. <laughs> I would be so just entertaining. Uh-huh. Well, apparently he has a plan. Let's follow him. <laughs> like, Come on, honey. Apparently he knows. <laughs> what was your... Uh, what was your first impression of your girl? When I first met you? Yeah, when you first met me. Oh, when you opened that door? Yeah, so the very that first. <laughs> <laughs> you, you asked. <laughs> Before getting to know me, first impression. I thought you were bitchy. Okay, tell me why. Uh, one, the, the way you answer the door. I answered. You know, you had an attitude. What? Why did I have an attitude? 
Well, you had an attitude because you was like, who's this about to come up in my house? Yeah, I had a yes, I had an attitude because you you said hello and walked directly yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. But then after that, so it was a. And but, but do you do you see how you framed it? Like, do you understand how a person who has never seen you before? Yeah, but I let you know who I was, and you would still had a little chip on your shoulder. But because no, 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 listen, listen, listen. I just want you Didn't to. You ask me a question. Yes, but I. I just this is a conversation. None of that matters now. I just want to. <laughs> it's still a conversation. No, right. for real. Can you see how a person who's living in a space who has never met the person who's knocking on the door would have either some type of some type of actual reaction besides pleasantness? Yes, absolutely. Okay, that's all but I want to know. After you knew who I'm, let, then I say even after you knew who I was, you've been seeing my picture. In the place, but after you knew who I was, you were still just a little bitchy. You talking about that same day? And after, yes. How was I bitchy? I've given you because you be in a, in a flirty way. You were still bitchy. Let me. I'm. I, I, I'm enjoying the story. Okay. I can't. Ask. I, I'm trying to finish. Damn it! I'm getting to the why. I thought and you I was, was bitchy. The bitchy. No, I'm telling you why. If you would just listen, shut the fuck. You ain't done that since I known you. Nah. Uh. So after that, after the initial. Who are you? And, and, and I'm like, I'm me, him, bitch, look at me. Um, I would still come over. And I remember one time, uh, we were still kind of flirting around. And it was one time, she was, you remember you was going out. And Danger, she still does to this day, dragging all this luggage and stuff. She was about to go on a trip. I don't know where she was going. And I was there. And I said, oh, let me help you with you. You was like, I got it. I don't need your help. It was just little stuff like that. I'm like, I'm trying to keep your ass from fracturing your skull as you fall down the steps. Did I fall down with the all, steps? With all this luggage. I'm trying to be a gentleman to help you out. And you like, I got it. I don't need your help. Did I fall down the steps? It was me. Did I fall down the steps? I was going to try to highlight her. Did I fall down the steps? You could have. It ain't about what you did, dude. But did I? It ain't about what you did. No, dude. I'm just asking the question. If you came in, I had a pistol right here. Like, Why ain't you got that out? Did anybody I'm, get shot? I'm just asking. But did anybody get I, shot? I don't know. You could have. You would never admit to it. What's this? I, that's been not on your shin that first time. No, Where it come from? This happened since we've been together. Nah, you did that to me. It, it happened since you, I've known you. No. That happened we, on them steps. Because no. they, they you know I'm con- <laughs> you you stone lying. steps. He's it's a like liar. it's like concrete and it got stone pebbles in it. That's the kind of you stuff they had. You hurt me. You probably me. slipped on that second. You hurt to lash, me with one of your knives. It hit your shin. One of the knives. Oh, you you slugged out and it hit my damn she is shin. Lying. <laughs> now, it looks and like you hurt you me. Cut that off. Here, come here. <laughs> Get away. <laughs> um, okay, so my first impression of you. But I was still flirting with it. I, it didn't matter. I was like. Did, wait a minute, did you have any nice things to say? Because I can keep it mean too. Oh, yeah, this. yeah. No, I thought you was cute. You were funny, and you I, thought I was funny. Did I think you were funny? Nah, cause you wasn't being funny around me. I th- definitely thought you was cute. You came out very smart, though. I did. That's Thank what you. that was a little intimidating. I said she got some intelligence, <laughs> so my wit got. I got to step my wit game up, <laughs> cause I'm witty as hell. Back then, I was even sharper than I am now. I, su- <laughs> I surprised myself when I think of some of the comebacks I used to have. <laughs> uh, but uh, I was like, oh, I got to step my game up, cause she's quick. Mm-hmm. She quick, quick. Thank you. And I was like, I'm make sure I meet her ass every time. Um, Marcus had a subtle arrogance to him from jump. And what I mean by that is back to how we originally first met. I just steal the audacity for <laughs> this man to knock on the door. I say hello. He says hey, and then walks in. It still blows yeah. my mind. Cause y'all gotta understand. I thought she was one of the fr- a friend visiting them. Mm-hmm. Like I had no idea. My sister did not tell me that they found somebody to sleep in the room that I was using. So <laughs> rent. Uh, <laughs> I was paying rent. Yeah, like I thought she was like one of uh, was it Melanie? Yeah, one of Melanie Melody's. or one of my uh, sister's friends. Just and they just happened to be by the door and open. I was like, hey, what's up? Like, so out. you know, so for for me, it was really like. It, it was, even though off top, I was like, oh, who's this fine ass man? But it was still kind of like, how dare somebody just walk up into my house that I'm, you know, also paying rent for without being invited in. Yeah, That's really what it was. And he was like, I'm Sonya's brother. And I was like, okay. So I'm dealing with the duality of, bitch, you look a mess. <laughs> <laughs> you need to pull it together. And then also like, why would why would you just walk in and not say that first? Um, 
And I'm thinking, why you care? Like, you you don't live here. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you don't live here. Because I don't know that they know him when he walks in either. One, I know both of their boyfriends very well. I know Sonia's boyfriend. I've known him since high school. Well, her boyfriend at the time. I knew Melanie's boyfriend. He, at the time, was my current boyfriend's best friend. Um, so I really could not figure out what piece of the puzzle he was until he said something because Sonia had never mentioned any of her siblings. Um, so, and then after that, he definitely came off young, fun, and jovial. So even though I definitely was the more of the picker, I, meaning I definitely, out of the fussiness, of the like, mm, mm, mm. That was mainly me because, again, I, one, that was the only way I was going to be able to be around him because you would have made me very nervous had I just been nice. I would have made sure I made you nervous. <laughs> yes, you would have. You would have made me so super <laughs> duper nervous. Long hug. Hey, how you doing? Ah! Back rub. <laughs> <laughs> Give a little kiss right ah! there. <laughs> <laughs> I can't just because I know it was like she ain't gonna take nothing serious, so I'm just gonna flirt this. Oh, I'm gonna make his whole I would have, thing uncomfortable. I would have been like this. <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking about darting to my room every time? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> would have been, I couldn't take it. <laughs> so, in order to, to actually be in your like presence and be halfway comfortable, I had to be snarky because that was the only way that I was like. I know I can keep our conversation on the up and up. Mm -hmm. There will be, he would not aggressively like hit on me. Like it would always be, I know I could have kept him on his toes of having to have a comeback versus saying anything that would have made me feel like, oh my God, <laughs> did he just say that? <laughs> <laughs> Cause I'm not that girl. Like there, are, you know, there are chicks that can like easily like be like, "What's up?" Can have that type of personality and really go after whatever dude they wanted. That is not you. That is not that chick angel. That chick angel is like you gonna have to come up to me and you have to come up to me at a speed that I can handle. If you come up too fast, that's gonna make me go. Mm -mm, no. No, because one, I feel like one, you're going to put me in deeper waters than what I'm willing to be in. And then I'm going to drown. OK, that's what the, that's what the <laughs> hell I'm going to do is drown. I need to feel comfortable with I can escape this if I need to. And so um, but luckily, Marcus never took any of my snarkiness too seriously. And he was funny. So we could, it was like a little tennis match mm. back and forth. It didn't matter what I kind of threw at him. He would, he would be able to throw it back, but throw it back in a way that it's it would like <laughs> <laughs> throw it back in a way that didn't hurt my feelings. Like he tried to comment. He tried to make it. It, it made me think one. It made me pause for a second when I had on the little red shorts. Mm -hmm. And I came out into the living room to work out. Um, <laughs> Y'all hear that? <laughs> surely. I was going to work out anyways, but uh -huh. I could have chose a different pair of shorts. Uh, and you were like, them shorts is ugly. It's something that was what you said. And I was like, for a second, I was like, oh my God, are my shorts ugly? And then I was like, no, they not. She was switching all around that damn problem for no damn reason. <laughs> I was like, actually, my shorts aren't ugly. <laughs> they were silk. No, they weren't. They were cotton and they were short as hell. They cut they ended right above where my the dark part of my butt <laughs> started. <laughs> right above there. So yeah. Humor is so much so I didn't know that humor was a way to my heart, actually. Which was really interesting because I never dated anyone that was funny. Every dude that I dated was just like just a guy. They weren't. I've always been the funnier one out of any other, like, situationship that I have pursued. Never have I had someone match my wit. And this fool, 
as you all already know, he was just, t -t 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 -t, and I was just like, wow, this is interesting. This, so how did your perspective change after our first date of me? Oh, girl. You know, you got to think back. <laughs> I'll start. Um, while he says he was trying to be a gentleman before when he was trying to help me with my luggage and stuff, again, I had to keep him at an arm's distance. And also, while I was pretty sure that he was flirting with me, it's always, you always have that little voice in the back of your head that's like, girl, but if you are reading this wrong and you ever like act on that, you're going to look so stupid. And there's no recovering. If I was like, so you feeling me? You were like, no. I, you like a big sister. <laughs> I've been like. You could be like, yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I've been like, let me just uh, put my stomach back into my throat, back where it goes. So even like with stuff like that, I was like, I'd rather keep it like this until there is an honest to God sever of or crossing over the line of mm -hmm. but you were going to still have to be again I it was never even though my best friend kept trying to convince me to cross that line she was like girl you, mean, you lucky she didn't come to me first like <laughs> hey you know my girl feeling you Why, <laughs> I was like all the gloves is coming off <laughs> <laughs> ah, no! ah, it just makes me so uncomfortable and we're married oh, it would have been horrible <laughs> You, you'd have been in a club where you just did a. Ah! <laughs> I mean, like, leave me alone. Leave me alone. Oh, you lucky Nina didn't come to me, boy. Oh, she's like, girl, no, I'm certain. Oh, man, you lucky she didn't say nothing. She's like, I'm certain he's feeling you. I was like, <laughs> I will not, because he could have a girlfriend, because he could be a whore for all I know, which there was a good chance that you would have been. Yeah, I probably did yeah, then. Yeah, exactly. But uh, I didn't know if somebody claimed you. Oh yeah. Because of our age gap, no, I didn't know the girls you. that were your like. I didn't know the girls that were like in the age group with you. Um, but um, what changed for me is that I saw your non. That was the first time I saw your non silly side. Mm -hmm. You had always been this just young jovial dude. Like I'd seen you in the club. We danced together and stuff like that. It was all still very young, playful. But after our first date, like seeing you, your, your low key arrogance turned to confidence. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, oh, like you were very, you seemed very confident on our first date. Like mm -hmm. you didn't seem nervous. You seemed like, I'm just going to show her a good time. I like her. I've been wanting to ask her out. Where for me, I was still it helped it helped calm me down because I was nervous I was still very nervous I was just like okay because again I did not want to I don't want to say get caught off guard I didn't want to go into the deep end with you too fast too soon mm -hmm. okay did that give you time to yeah no I think I remember it was uh with me it was just like it was definitely like the whole bitchy thing that left far like after the first time meeting. It was just like, yeah, we just developed a back and forth relationship over the years. Yeah, rapport. And then after the first, yeah, after the rapport. After the first date, um, it was more like, okay, no, nah, she is good. Like I do like her. I could see. It was like me. I was. I think I was still cloudy because I was still all over the damn place. Yeah. Like. Yeah. I wasn't a thousand percent sure about us. If, uh, yeah, you were just long like she's after cool. We started dating. Yeah, I was just like, let my girl have to mess this up. Y'all gotta understand, I had no examples of <laughs> faithfulness around me. <laughs> so I was just like, why would I? I ain't about to put myself in that position uh, yeah. to and be have no uh, wife and multiple girlfriends and stuff. Yeah. So for me, it was just like, I don't know. We'll see. It seems cool. We'll see. Um, so I, uh, for me, I definitely think it was good because I too, even though after our first date, 
I already knew what this was just because of what God had said to me about what my husband's name was. So I knew what it was. But for me, I was also trying to walk in like much a lot of maturity and understanding that like me, me and him were just talking. And, and also I was at that point of he could be my husband. He ain't got to be my husband right now. So I personally was like, okay, I got somebody to date in Kentucky. I can get somebody to date in L.A. I had never been. Marcus was in his dating a lot of people phase, not yeah. taking anyone seriously. And I had an out-of-town out girlfriend. <laughs> you had another out-of-town girlfriend? Yeah. Oh, we I didn't know that. Well, we weren't, uh, we don't know what the hell we were calling it. Okay. So he had somebody also not in Kentucky. So I was trying to experience dating for real. I had always been in like what felt like monogamous situations, even situations that weren't that serious. They would be my only situation. Yeah. So I was like, this is a good time, Angel, for you to like really be out here in these streets and like date multiple people and see what it's like not to throw your heart into yeah, someone. Angel was just dating a bunch of what she thought was possible husbands. Mm, well, no, one, <laughs> the, one, the, one of the, excuse me, one of the, <laughs> excuse me. One of the fellas that I was dating, I absolutely 100% knew this ain't the one for me, but I ain't got nothing else to do. So I guess me and you <laughs> going to keep talking. And they wanted to continue to pursue it. I was actually ready to cut them off. And they called and was just like, I got a feeling about it. I was like, what? I remember getting my, I was getting my, my nails and my toes done. And I was like, how did this happen? I don't, I was so proud of myself that I was about to be like, <laughs> Done with that. Moving on. <laughs> and they were like, it's just something about you. Is what? Why? It shouldn't have been. Why is there something about me? <laughs> so, um, yeah, that didn't last very long, though. We only were dating other people for like three months, three, maybe four months before we were just like, this is this. This we're going to be just us. It was going into Christmas, and I think I'm pretty sure I was the one that was just like, "All right, what are we doing? What are we doing?" Oh, actually, no, it was you. It was you. That don't sound right. No. No, you gave me the ultimatum. No, no, I didn't. You did. No, I let me. T let me tell this little T. You remember, you. This was our agreement. I said, we can talk to whomever we want to. Mm -hmm. However, if we're intimate with someone, let's just keep it a buck with each other so that we, if we're ever intimate, we're like aware of what the hell is going on. You were and you felt bad. Oh, okay. You know what? I, I believe he felt bad, and it, it wasn't so much he felt bad to me. He ended up, you end up telling the girl, uh -huh. and she was like, "What? You have a girlfriend?" And you were like, yeah, kind, yes. "You were like, <laughs> you were like, kind of, but not really." And I was just like, "Huh?" And so that's what started the conversation. It was on. Oh, I, yeah, let yeah. me, I, uh, and this is how I know because I was really trying to play it cool. I was really like trying to be like, we can do whatever. Like, we not, you know, we not, you know, you know, yeah, we not, we not locked into each other. Like, I can have something on the side, and you can have whatever. We each other's side right now. And when he said that he felt a little bit like, mm -hmm, I was like, oh, well, shoot, I ain't got to do no side stuff. We could just be together. <laughs> I was trying to be grown, but listen, I'm fine with just because again. Think, was that game? Nah. <laughs> no, I'm certain it wasn't. That I am almost positive. But yeah. So yeah. That was just a little insight on the beginning of this. I told Angela I'm uh I be getting concerned about my memory. It was I was home visiting this recently and I used to rent a house like three houses down from my parents. It was a, it was a, just a Opportunity of a lifetime, a lady, she was going out of town. She had to go work out of town for a year, and she was looking for somebody to rent, and she knew my parents. She was like, oh, perfect. He's responsible. I know he'll take care of the house. So I lived in that house for like a little over a year or something like that. And 
I was home visiting and I was, you know, driving and I was making a U-turn and I looked at the house and I like, I know I lived there. I know I pulled in that driveway, I pulled in that garage. I painted in that house because they had some water damage. None of it felt familiar. Mm. The yard didn't feel familiar, look familiar, none of it. I know what the house looks like on the inside. Mm -hmm. None of it was familiar. And it was the weirdest thing. That's how life be treated. And she'd be like, so that third date, and we, I'm like. Mm-hmm. He looked in his phone. He's t- <laughs> Recently, what? he looked in his phone. He said, Marcus proposed to me on the calendar. Oh. <laughs> and I said, he said, what is this? I said, that is the day you proposed to me. I'm like, that's the day? That's the day. I have no, I knew it was summertime. I put it in there so that I would never, like, because I couldn't remember it. I was no. like, I won't always remember this. Put it in the the calendar so that it comes up every year. That way I'll never forget. They yeah, said, don't be concerned. We just get, we just, oh, yeah, I guess. We are. I love that I have somebody grow up with. All right, you guys. Uh, what you find, Sal? That's the end of today's episode. You can follow me at That Chick Angel on every single platform in a way. You can find me that way, I should say, or That Chick Angel TV. Um, I'll be having some new merch come out with a as a collaboration with Life's Journey. So be on the lookout for that. It should be coming out top of June, July, top of July. And um, there was one more thing I was going to tell y'all. New music coming out. We'll leave it at that. What you want to tell the people? Y'all, I'm in the process of uh, filming more epi- new episodes of Tasty with Tank. Patreon, I'm going to tap into y'all because I'm going to need y'all's help on Thursday uh, of this week. And I'm going to let y'all know. Actually, as soon as we cut, I'm going to let y'all know exactly what that is. I'm going to need y'all's help on Thursday. Probably, I think, 11. I'll let y'all know. Or 11, 11.30. PTST. PST. PST. PTST. I was like, It's when a certain time something tragic happens. California time. Uh, yeah, so I'm in the process of filming that. I got some uh, got some, some good guests coming on this, this season, if you want to call it that. And then, uh, yeah, I think that's it, y'all. Y'all know where y'all can find me. All right, check out our sponsors, Life uh, 360 and Earning. Talk to y'all later. Y'all have a good one, fam.